Welcome to module 60 of Point Set Topology Part 1. We shall continue the study of topological vector spaces today. As earlier, throughout this section, we shall fix V to be a topological vector space. I will not use this uh, notation for anything else. We have results parallel to the fundamental lemmas we had for a topological group obtained merely by changing the multiplicative notation to additive one. Because if you have topological vector space, V plus and the zero element there will give you a topological group which is abelian. So we shall denote them by additive notation plus instead of the multiplication dot. The multiplication will be there only not from V cross V to V, but only from K cross V to V now. So all the statements which were multiplicative for the topological group with that we have seen will now be obtained by just changing them to additive notation. In addition, because of the scalar multiplication and the continuity of that, we will have many other important results. Okay, so all those things, the new one, I will give you a hint or a full proof of those things. But those which we have already got for a topological group as such, those I will only restate if at all. So with this, the first theorem here is again a list of statements A, B, C, D, E, F, which are all easy consequences of the statement that V is a topological vector space. We start with any A, B, C subsets of V. Then all these statements are true. So let U be a neighborhood system of zero. Then, for any subset A, A bar will be equal to intersection of all A plus U, U inside U. Remember, there was exactly similar result, even stronger, intersection of AU, multiplicity notation in the case of topological groups. AU or you can take UA and so on. Okay. And you don't have to take all the neighborhoods, just a neighborhood system will do. Okay, so that is also an easy consequence anyway. Okay, so the next one is A bar plus B bar is contained inside A plus B bar. Once again, the corresponding thing was for topological groups we had a bar into B bar contained inside A B bar. So same thing is true for this one. I don't have to elaborate this one. Next thing comes, this is new to topological vector spaces only. Because now I'm using convexity. This convexity notion was not there in a topological group. Let C be a convex set, then both C bar and interior of C are convex. B is balanced implies B bar is balanced. Further, if B is zero is in B interior, which is same thing as this B is a neighborhood of zero, then interior of B is also balanced. You see, unless you have zero here, you can't claim that one, okay? The second thing is, because of uh, uh, the eighth one, fifth one, if B is bounded, then B bar is bounded. So I have taken convexity, balancedness, and boundedness, okay? If A is a vector subspace, 
then this closure is also vector subspace. Okay, so so what C, D, E, F are new to topological vector spaces. A and B are old one only. Right? Let me let me just go through them again. In the context of topological robes, you can check lemma 5.4. Okay, we have proved that A bar is equal to intersection of A plus U such that U is a neighborhood of zero. If you take all the neighborhoods, then this is just in the multiplicative negotiation you have done. So it is true for this one also. But then you can just restrict it to a neighborhood system. So that will be a smaller family of same mem members of this family itself, that is smaller family. So intersection has to be larger. Okay. But here, the smaller family has the property that each member is contained in some member here. Therefore, the equality occurs. So, the B is directly from lemma 5.14 for products, namely A B bar, A, A, A bar into B bar is contained in that A B bar, which will become now A bar plus B bar contained inside. A plus B bar. Okay, now come to uh, statement C. If C is convex, I must show that C bar is convex. For any T belonging to I, okay, we have T times C bar from part, part uh, that you don't have to worry about that also. This is just multiplication by T, right? Which is a uh, which is a translation. If t is zero, both sides are zero. If t is not zero, then then it is an uh, homeomorphism. So t c bar is t of c bar. Therefore, in particular, what happens is t c bar plus one minus t c bar. One minus t will be also inside zero one, right? So I can take these two, which is nothing but T C bar plus one minus T C bar, right? From the first observation. But now this is A bar plus B bar. So it is contained inside A plus B whole bar, right? So there is T C plus one minus T C. But for each point here, T C plus one minus C is a point of C. So this whole thing is just C bar is contained inside C bar, no problem. Okay, so this proves that if you take some u here and some v here, t times that u plus 1 minus t times v is contained inside C bar, which means C bar is convex. Okay, proving this statement here is same thing as convexity. Okay, now prove the convexity of the interior. Observe that T C interior plus 1 minus t c interior is already contained inside c because c is convex. Some point here t times that plus 1 minus t times some other point here is already inside c by convexity of c. But this one this is now t of c interior that is an open set 1 minus t times this one is also an open set maybe one of them may collapse to single point. That is the caution. If, if it is a single point, when t is 0 or 1 minus t is 0, it is not an open set. But it is already inside the, inside the interior of C bar. Therefore, this part is always an open subset of V. And hence, it is contained inside the maximum open subset that is interior. Okay, first is contained inside C, but this is open, therefore it is contained inside C interior. So C interior is also convex. Now, let B be balanced. Then, for any alpha in scalar with mod alpha is 1, we have alpha B is contained inside B. So it's contained is a B bar also. Okay, so B bar, the 
closure, it's a closed set, right? Therefore, if you take alpha B bar, which is same thing as alpha B bar, okay, alpha B bar is the smallest closed subset containing the alpha B, must be contained inside B bar, okay? So that already assumed, that already proves that B bar is balanced. Alpha B bar is less than containing the B bar, means B bar is balanced. Further, now we assume zero is in the interior of B. Then alpha B interior is contained inside alpha B and that is contained inside B. If alpha is not zero, this will be an open subset. Then alpha B interior is open subset and sense is contained inside interior of B. On the other hand, if alpha is zero, then this will reduce to single point. Okay, zero is there, it will be, otherwise there will be a problem. So alpha B is zero, so zero is already there in the interior. So you are done. So this proves that B interior is also balanced. Okay, alpha B interior in both the cases is contained inside, inside B, but then it is contained inside B interior. So B interior is also balanced. Now come to A. What was the statement E here? Let's go back. Statement E here is if B is bounded, then B bar is bounded. Okay, what is boundedness? Given a neighborhood V of identity. Okay. I must produce, I must produce as M such that S bigger than M implies B is contained as S of B. That's what I have to do. That is the meaning of that uh, for B bar, B bar is contained as S1. That's what, that's what I have to do. Okay, B bar is bounded means that. Okay, so first I apply regularity of of uh, the vector space, topological vector space, which we have proved. Okay, given a neighborhood V of A, by regularity, we can choose a neighborhood, closed neighborhood U, such that E is contained inside V contained, U contained inside U bar contained inside V, that is about it. So I am taking U bar as U now. Okay. U, I am calling, I am not calling it as open subset, but it is a neighborhood which is closed. Given any neighborhood, there is a closed neighborhood contained inside that. You take this one to be a closed neighborhood. Okay. Now apply the boundedness of B to get an M such that for all S bigger than M, B will be contained inside S times C for every S bigger than M. Okay, therefore, B bar closure is contained in S U bar, which is nothing to S times U bar. But U bar is U because I have my choice is that U is a closed neighborhood. It is contained in S U. Okay, now S U is contained inside V for every S greater than or equal to M. Okay, so sorry, SV here. SU is contained as SV for every S greater than or equal to M. So that is what my aim was. So the proof of uh, that B bar is balanced is done. Okay. Now the last one, it is a statement that if, if something, whatever notation, I have taken the same notation. So A is a vector subspace, then A bar is a vector subspace. The similar proof we had for topological groups also. Okay. But here, here, this you can look at this one. This is only for 
the scalars between 0 and 1. But the entire discussion, you know, can be applied to any t, any, any scalar here. Okay. Because now I am assuming that instead of C, I am assuming A is a vector space already. So lambda times A will be already inside A. Therefore, the same proof will work here for uh, to give you F. Now, if A is closed, A is a closed under addition and scalar multiplication, that is a vector space, some subspace. And A bar is also closed on to scalar multiplication and addition. That is what the meaning. Okay, if u and v are there, lambda times u plus mu times v is there. That's what you have to show, right? Instead of t and 1 minus t. So proof is the same thing there with the extra assumption that instead of c arbitrary convex set, so c a is now vector subspace. <clears throat> Let us go ahead. Let O be a neighborhood of 0 in a V. Now, the first claim is there exists a balanced open neighborhood B of 0 such that B is contained inside O. So, a arbitrary neighborhood, we can improve it to become balanced open neighborhood. Openness is obvious. Anyway, balanced neighborhood, that is the whole idea. Further, if this O is convex, then inside A, in the statement A, we can choose B to be convex as well. That means it is balanced and convex. Okay. That is, every topological vector space V has a local base consisting of balanced neighborhood. That is the statement A. If V is locally convex, that means it has convex neighborhood like this, then it has a local base consisting of balanced convex neighborhood. Here, important thing is you just assume one convex neighborhood. Then there is a whole system of convex neighborhoods. Okay, that is the whole, whole idea here. Sir. Uh, uh, this balanced open neighborhood, this concept, is it uh, something similar to symmetric neighborhoods in topological groups? It is just symmetric, is just one single thing, right? Inverse. Inverse corresponds to minus one here. Right? So that is that, yes. that is much that is much weaker there. Even in topological groups, you couldn't do anything. Scalar is only minus one, <laughs> just comes there, that's all. Right. Inverse becomes minus. Right? So, here is a stronger symmetry. Right? You may say only for unit uh, scalars also. That is also symmetry. But this is much more stronger. Okay? It does imply that. But it is much, much stronger. Okay, so I told you that this is almost like bringing the, the, the balls inside a metric space. Okay, so these things will be played the role of open balls in a metric space. So you are bringing them in a backdoor entry, it's like that. Okay, so they will play, play the role of the open balls. That is much more stronger than just uh, symmetry. Okay. So, by continuity of scalar multiplication at zero, moment you have some neighborhood, there exists an open neighborhood V of E such that if delta is positive, such that alpha W is contained inside O for all alpha with mod alpha less than or equal to delta. Okay, O is a neighborhood, 0 goes to 0 under scalar multiplication. Okay, so you must, you can control the scalars, that is the whole idea. There is a positive delta, so mod alpha less than delta would imply 
the, the whole image, alpha w, will contain inside O. So, this is by continuity of scalar multiplication. All right. So, all that you are doing is uh, the use of scalar multiplication here. Now, let B equal to union of alpha w, where mod alpha is less than equal to delta. The first part says that this family is non-empty. There is at least one W. Now, you take all such W which satisfies this mod alpha is less than equal to delta. There may not be any, right? So, you have taken all such things where is one such that alpha W is contained inside of O. Okay. Now, you take union of all of them. Then B is an open neighborhood of E. Okay. So, B is contained inside O and B is balanced. You must put that mod alpha is less than equal to delta. I would like to have this one contained inside O, but that is the condition here on alpha. Okay. So, so I would like all these alpha Ws also contained inside O. So, in any case, the union of all open subsets alpha W, therefore B is open. B itself will be now balanced. Why? Because if multiply say beta, mod beta is less than or equal to alpha, beta times B will be contained inside union of alpha into beta times B. But if multiply alpha by beta where beta is less than equal, mod alpha will be automatic. Mod alpha beta will be as much less than equal to delta. So those things will be contained inside this one again. That is the word time. So so, beta is balanced and it is an open subset of uh, contained inside O and containing 0. Now, in the second part, I want it to be, what second part, what to say? I want it to be uh, convex as well, right? So, suppose one of them is convex, that O is convex, you have already got. Now you take A to be intersection of all alpha O where mod alpha is exactly equal to 1. Okay. So in the case of if, if, if the vector space is real vector space, this just means uh, O and minus O. That is the way we have done to get a symmetric neighborhood. Remember that. So here you have to take mod alpha equal to 1 only to saturate it, intersection of all of them. Okay. Now check that A is convex because o, alpha, o is convex to begin with. So this you have to check that this will be also convex. Okay. Hence, interior of A is convex. That is what we have seen, right? If C is convex, interior of C is convex was one of the part of the previous theorem. Now, let B contain the of a balanced neighborhood of E. Inside this one, by part A, we can take a balanced neighborhood of E. Then if mod alpha is equal to 1, then you can write B as alpha inverse of alpha of B. Alpha and alpha cancel out. But Alpha B being the balance is contained inside B. So it's contained alpha inverse of B. But alpha inverse is also mod 1. So it is contained inside B. So all these things must be equal, right? Right? Therefore, B itself is contained inside this intersection. Because for all alpha is contained inside B. So intersection, intersection, B itself will be contained inside all of them. Okay, for all each alpha. Okay. Therefore, the interior is a neighborhood of E. Okay. Because B is a neighborhood and 0 belongs to E. So, if you take the whole of interior, that will be a neighborhood of E because there is one such. It remains to show that interior is balanced. All right. Interior is always convex. Now, interior balance is what I would show. For this, it is first suffice to show that 
A itself is balanced. Again, we know that if A is balanced, A interior is balanced. Okay. So, to show that A is balanced, take mod beta less than or equal to 1 and beta equal to T times alpha, where mod alpha is equal to 1. Okay. Any beta can be written as e power 2 pi i t, right, times t. So, that is why you can write t, where mod alpha is equal to 1. And t will be between 0 and 1, positive, non-negative. Okay. Once you write like that, beta A is T times alpha A. But alpha A is equal to A by this property, it's intersection. That is why T alpha A is equal to A. That is equal to now T alpha A equal to T times A. Now what if A? A is intersection of all, I can write, don't write alpha, it may confusing. Now write another variable, gamma O where mod gamma is 1. Okay, this is just A, just T times that. No, but now you can push the T inside. So intersection of all gamma, mod gamma equal to 1, gamma of T O. Okay, but O is a convex set to begin with. Okay, assumption is that one, containing 0. And hence, T times O is contained inside O. T times O consists of all the line segments from 0 to points of points of O, T times that one. So all the T times O will be also inside O. So therefore, what if this whole thing is inside O? So beta A is contained inside. Instead of this T, I can just write O, right? Once I write O, this whole thing will be nothing but A. Right? Beta A is contained inside. Thus, what we have shown is that in general, balanced neighborhoods form a fundamental system. If it is locally convex, then convex and balanced neighborhoods form a fundamental system. Okay. Now we will slowly, uh, these, these are fundamental results. Now we we'll slowly you know, arrive at some uh, concrete results. Every compact subset of K is bounded. Every compact subset K of V is bounded. Okay. So you see, I told you that these balanced neighborhoods are playing the role of matrix. I mean, uh, uh, balls in a matrix space. So now we can talk about compact subsets being bounded, just like in a matrix space. Okay, of course, our notion of boundedness is also different here. This boundedness is stronger. That's what we have already remarked the last time. What is the proof? Proof is very easy. Given a neighborhood O of zero inside V, we have to we have to find some M positive such that. S is bigger than M implies K is contained inside S O. For any neighborhood, you find an M, which is this property, that will mean that K is bounded. This is the definition of boundedness. Okay. Now, the previous theorem says that, part A says that, I may assume O is balanced neighborhood. Suppose I do it for a smaller neighborhood, balanced neighborhood, smaller than O, the same statement, it will be true for O also. Okay, so I can assume that O itself is balanced, but I am replacing it by B. B is a neighborhood of 0, which is balanced and contained inside O. So we shall now prove that, find an M such that S bigger than M, then K is contained inside S times B. If we prove that, then this uh, B is contained inside O, it will be contained in SO also. Okay, but since this is a balanced neighborhood, now B will be contained inside twice B, contained inside three times B and so on. So this will be an increasing sequence. It is because expanding, expanding ball is just like ball, as you see. See, in Rn, what do you have done? You'd have taken ball with radius one. It will be concentric ball, right? 
contained inside twice of that, contains three times that, and so on. This is precisely the property that I was hinting at. And from lemma 5.2041, whatever, we get k, which is this is increasing union of this one. Okay. So remember, if we have an increasing union of any neighborhoods where these numbers go to infinity, then this whole thing is covering the entire vector space. Just like in the case of Rn and so on. Anyway, so this is what is happening in a topological vector space also. That is by 5.24. K is a subset of V anyway, but V is contained in the union of N base. So that is 5.24. But K is compact and these are open subsets. So you will get one of them covering the whole thing because you're increasing union. Okay, so we get N such that K is contained in NP. Now you take M, to, M equal to this N. If S is bigger than that, again using balance, uh, B is balanced neighborhood, the K will be already inside NB. K will be also inside S times that. Okay, because S is bigger than M you are doing. So this M can be chosen as N. So one way increasing union we have seen. Now there is another parallel decreasing union, decreasing intersections, balls of smaller and smaller radius, right? So similar thing here. If B is a bounded neighborhood of 0, then 1 by 2 power n B, or n range over all the natural numbers, forms a neighborhood system for 0. It is just like the ball B epsilon, where epsilon tends to 0 is a neighborhood system. Instead of that, you can write 1 by B 1 by n also. Or then you can be 1 by 2 power n also, right? So similar to this is what we are going to prove. 1 by n, etc., epsilon into 0, etc., are more difficult. Just this is nice, easy thing, and it's enough because this sequence converges to 0. Okay, so let u be any neighborhood. Recall by uh, definition of boundedness, what implies boundedness of B implies that there is another way of looking at it. Instead of there exists m, such as s bigger than m, etc., you can invert the whole thing, there exists epsilon positive such that, okay, delta less than epsilon implies delta B is contained inside U. Okay, if B is contained inside SU, where S is bigger than M, is one definition equivalent to delta less than epsilon implies delta B is contained inside U. This epsilon can be chosen like this. Once you have that, all that you have to do is 2 power minus n less than epsilon. Okay. Then 1 by 2 power n b for some uh, n large, namely this much, that will be contained inside you. For every neighborhood, some member is here is inside you, means that this is a neighborhood system. Over. Okay. So we shall use all these things in a neat way to you know derive some nice results. Another easy and fundamental result here is take any two vectors, okay? Take any two vectors. Let x be any topological space and alpha, beta from x to k be any two continuous functions, okay? So alpha and beta are continuous functions into the scalar. So k is a scalar field on which v is a vector space okay then you take the linear combination of alpha x times u1 that is a vector inside v plus beta x times u2 this is a linear combination right but it's a function now as x varies on x capital x into v so this function is continuous so these are elementary things which we have observed inside Rn and so on, right? So same thing we are observing in any, any topological vector space. What is the proof? Proof is precisely this one. Namely, scalar multiplication and additions are continuous. That's all. Now we have an easy corollary here. 
every linear map k n to v is continuous where n is any positive integer. This is a special case now. Okay, k x was an arbitrary space. Okay, we, we produce alpha and beta are continuous functions we assume, then the linear combination is continuous. Now I want to say every linear map from k n to v is continuous. So for two. Talk about linear maps, you have to have the domain also as a topological vector space. But you can't replace this one by an arbitrary topological vector space. In arbitrary topological vector space to arbitrary topological vector space, linear maps may not be continuous. Okay, that is why this theorem, this corollary is important. It says that k power n, which is nothing but a finite dimensional vector space over n, then every linear map is continuous. Understand the importance of this one. If you replace this one by arbitrary topological vector space, then it will not be, it makes sense, but it will not be true. Proof is easy, similar to what we do for Rn and so on. Okay. Once we have that lemma, okay, let F be any linear map. All right. Any linear map into vector space, from vector space to vector space, is determined by its values on a basis. So let E1, E2, E N be the standard basis. You could, you could have chosen any base, no problem. Then I will look at the image of E1, E2, E N under F. So put U K equal to F of E K. Okay. Now every element F Z belonging to K N can be written as Z1, E1, etc. Z N, E N. Where the dice are scalars inside k. Right? Then we know that by linearity, f of z is nothing but z1 times fe1 plus 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 zn times fen. Right? Not only that, the coordinate functions inside k n to k, z going to zk, this is a kth coordinate of z, right? They are also continuous functions. Therefore, all that I have to do is iterate, you know, the previous lemma for two of them. Okay, z going to z1 is a continuous function times e1 plus z going to z2 is continuous times e2. So add them. So first two addition is continuous. Next third one is continuous and so on. So what you get is z going to z1 e1. e1 is what? f of u1, etc. Zn into En is what? F of un. So that is continuous, but that is the precisely the value of Fz. Right? So F is continuous. F is expressed as sum of n functions, each of them is continuous. Alright? So easily proved, but a non-trivial result, an important result, that finite dimensional vector spaces, linear maps are continuous. You know, as a student, for me, uh, because we were all the time studying finite dimensional vector spaces, linear maps are continuous, linear maps are continuous. But suddenly, when it goes to infinite dimension, and linear maps may not be continuous. That was a realization. Oh, okay. So there is no way. So it took some time. I, I really thought that I can prove that every linear map is continuous, but that is not the case. Okay, so I won't emphasize that fact here. So let us stop here today. So next time we will reap a good harvest and prove three important theorems and that will be the end of the course. So today we will stop here. Thank you.